going to take faith to stand against the storm that's here now. We're seeing a wrath of God upon our nation. In Romans chapter 1, in both 20, in three places, 24, 26, and 28, Paul writes, the Apostle Paul writes, and he gave him up, and God gave him up. Because it's always about the people of God. If the people of God are faithful, the whole land is blessed. He will rebuke the enemies. He will rebuke his enemies. He will use us to destroy his enemies. He always did. He did in the past. You read it all through the Old Testament. And he's calling for an army. And that's what this channel is all about. Unity in Christ. Come together as one body to step out in faith beyond ourselves. That's what this channel is all about. And things are getting very exciting lately. I'm mean, here in Waterbury, Connecticut. And uh, I've been preaching in Waterbury. I've been preaching in New Britain. I went up to an uh, abortion clinic in uh, West Hartford last Friday. And, uh, and things are getting very exciting out here. Why? Because God, in his intimate wisdom, decided he was going to use a, a servant like me, not very well educated, not very well spoken, but someone who's just wanted to lay their whole life to the Lord, down, the Lord Jesus Christ down. Just wanted to lay my whole life down. Just wanted to pick up that cross and follow my Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't want to be a disciple of my pastor or my church. I wanted to be our Lord Jesus Christ disciple. And out of my belly is flowing rivers of living water. And it, held, it has me out in the streets. Not saying God blesses you when somebody sneezes. Saying Jesus Christ died for you so you can live. Not saying God bless America. Jesus Christ is the Lord God who can straighten out America. No one else. Jesus Christ. We are the body of Jesus Christ. Preaching Jesus Christ. Everything's about Jesus Christ. When I go into a store now, it's about Jesus Christ. I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying God bless you because the devil loves when you say God bless you because he's the God of this world. He's the God that God unleashed upon this nation. The God of this world. The gods of this world. 65, 70 million babies in a mother's womb offered to the god Morlach. You know, we got the gods of Ashraf. We got, you know, feminization going on, you know, of men. Men are being born with hormones that make them feel like feminine. We got homosexuality welcoming all society. You know, it's like, it's like it's supposed to be a natural thing. When God made one man and one woman become one flesh. That is the law of God. For a man to leave his parents' home, be united with a wife. Her desire is going to be to the husband. And the husband is going to rule over the wife. Doesn't mean this husband has the authority or the right to suppress that woman. No. They become one. What that rule means is that he's responsible for that beautiful wife of his. He's responsible for he's responsible for the garden. It was Adam's fault that he did not protect Eve when Eve wanted that apple. Because he saw she saw that, hey, it's gonna offer me wisdom to know what is the knowledge of good and evil. When God said, stay away from it. But Adam was responsible for that. He was the one that was supposed to take care of his wife, protect his wife. And that ordinance hasn't changed. Her desire would be to him. He will rule over, meaning he'll make that beautiful wife of his, that beautiful rib of his, secure, protected, loved, She's a helpmate to him. 
But he was commanded to love her as Christ had loved the church. That's a sacrificial love. That's not just a love for her, but for his whole family. He is the spiritual leader of that household. But what's going on in society is men turn their back on God. They wanted to build a society without God. And everything got flipped over. Now the woman rule. But men, you are still responsible. So, if I have, if I have a, a, a disagreement about what direction we should go, the family should go, you know, what house should we buy, what furniture we should buy, you know, what flooring company or whatever. With my wife, she has one opinion and I have another opinion, right? Well, if I exercise the authority of a man, right? Whether it comes out right or wrong, I'm still responsible. Now, if I give her, you say, you do what you want to do. And whether it comes out right or wrong, I'm still responsible as the head of the man. You see, men don't want that responsibility. They don't want responsibility for kids anymore. They don't want responsibility for homes anymore. A lot of men don't even want to work anymore for a living. I see it all the time in Waterbury. And I'm out in the Waterbury streets telling people that, hey, listen, the kingdom of God is a hand, you have to repent. You have to lay your life down. Men, you gotta become the men you were created to be. Women, you support that man. Boy, talk about some of the hatred that I'm receiving. I bless the Lord for it because it's out of my belly flows rivers of living water. It's the Holy Spirit that's convicting me to be out always glorifying the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to witness, be witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Father sent His Son to die for us. And then the Father rose Him forward from the grave for our justification. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. No one wants to think that they are evil. No one wants to think they want to look at other people as being bad or evil. But listen, without the Lord Jesus Christ, He considers us all evil because we all have sinned. Sin is from the evil one. So if you have sin in your life, you are evil. And we don't look at it that way, but it's the truth. You're either good, and goodness can only come from our Lord Jesus Christ for those who lay down their lives and be led by His Holy Spirit and allow the Spirit to manifest Himself in you. Or we're evil. And that's, that's just the, the truth. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine. But he who sent me, if anyone wills to do his will, that's the Father's will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it's from God or whether I speak on my own authority. I'm asking you to judge. Am I speaking on my own, on my own behalf, with my own authority? Or is this the Holy Spirit convicting the church? to step out beyond themselves and become one in Christ Jesus and testify every day. You see, the devil doesn't mind you reading your Bible. He just doesn't. Matter of fact, the devil will teach you the Bible. The devil will say, hey, listen, you don't have to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. You don't have to become a disciple of Jesus. Just become a disciple of your church. Have your church look like the world but a little different because you praise Jesus. Don't have any fear. Don't have any reverence that the Lord God of the garden, who is the same, who cursed the earth, is the same Lord God who died to redeem us from that cursed earth. Just don't lay your life down by picking up that cross. Just be the south of your church. You know, have your Easter egg hunts. That's all beautiful. Do all the stuff that the world does. If you're friendship with the world, your enemy of God, but we won't pay attention to that truth. So the devil will teach you the word. He has no problem. I'm talking to the biblical people. When the Lord first gave me 
the first vision I ever had, it was like uh, the Bible just opened up in front of me. The first words were, many people will say they believe in me, but will not. So I used to think that meant people will say they're Christians, but have no clue what it is to be a Christian or don't even want to be a Christian, just want to use the name of, of Christianity. Just want to turn around and show people that, hey, I'm good, I'm good, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. That's what I thought it meant, right? But that's not the Lord is meaning. He's talking about the biblical church who reads his word, who say they love his word, but they don't allow that river, a flowing river, rivers flow out of their stomach. Just, whew, well, you have to testify of Jesus Christ all the time. And this is where the dam was built. See, in your stomach, that's where your Holy Spirit dwells. The Holy Spirit dwells right there. That's what confess, that's what causes me to confess Jesus Christ, preach Jesus Christ, talk Jesus Christ everywhere I go. Everywhere I go through the streets, that's what gets me to stand when a drug dealer was telling me I had to leave the neighborhood. I'm saying, no, I can't. I love people too much. I love you too much. I am not leaving. Yesterday I was around that brown building over there on the other side, and I'm preaching this woman. You know, she already ran over me one time with a wheelchair, but she was threatening me. And I'm telling her, listen, I love you too much. Another woman came out and said, hey, I'm trying to make a phone call. Leave down the street. But I discerned she was lying, and I told her that. I said, listen, I discerned through the spirit of the living God that you're lying to me right now, and no, I'm going to stay right here. And I kept on preaching. You know, oh, you're bothering people. When the Lord puts that right there, you got to let it fly, but you got to have that river of living water. That's being immersed with the Holy Spirit, and the dam is just open. You, you can't help but to speak Jesus Christ. Don't pray for boldness, the Lord said. We said this in another channel. Don't pray for boldness, I will not hear you. Pray for faith. And when faith comes and you start getting threatened, well, you know what, if I keep on speaking this way, they said they're gonna threaten, they're gonna fire me from my job, but I have to, right there, it's telling me I have to keep on confessing Jesus Christ, I can't stop. I can't go on with this, all this inclusiveness. I can't tell, I can't just go along with this woman, I mean this guy whose name was Dan, now wants to be called Danielle. No, I love you too much, Dan. If you cut it off, if you do all these things, you might be turned over to be have a reprobate mind, debased mind, and there's no repentance for you. You can't mock God. I love you too much. Well, I get fired. To the angel of the church at Ephesus write, these things says he, who holds the seven stars in his right hand. That's the seven angels that he, he describes that in, in the first chapter. Who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, the church. Listen to all this beautiful stuff he says. This is the church today where all this unfaithfulness started from. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. Well, I think we do bear people who are evil. But they didn't. At least not in their midst. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. And had found them liars. And you have preserved and have patience. And have labored, labored for my name's sake. And have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. A lot of people say, well, they, they're not putting Jesus first anymore. That could be true, but that's really not what he's saying here. If you look what he's saying right here, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Where you have fallen. That means where you were and where you are now. Repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand, that's your church, from this place. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and that we do not love our lives even unto death. Once you start 
loving your life. Once you start loving your life, you're not willing to lay it down anymore and not being able to use by God. Once a motivation is that I just want to be saved. I just want to make it to heaven. You know, I just want my little church. I just want to feel safe and secure in my little church. Then you stop, start losing your confession, your confession of faith. That's what happened. Once they made it about themselves, they're no longer confessing. This was a pre-Christian society that was persecuting them. They were being persecuted by the Romans, by all the different groups out there that have their own different gods. They were being persecuted by Jews. But yet, their first love was like compelling them. They had a river. They had a river flowing, a river out of there. Compelling them that, hey, I know I'm going to die. I know that I can be thrown in prison. I know that I can lose my life. But I have to tell you that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No other way to heaven. You are going to die in your sins. We are all evil without the Lord Jesus Christ taking our sins, taking our transgressions. I have to tell you these things.